Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on transmission line theory. For this video, I'm going to emphasize on the return loss. I'm going to define what is return loss. I'm also going to explain the return loss of a transmission line. So this will be the objective of this video. This will be the part 8 series discussion on transmission line theory. So if you're keen to know more about transmission line theory, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on transmission line theory. I also strongly suggest this. Okay, please take a look on the part 1. Okay, so this transmission line theory, the discussion is actually in a sequence. So you need to know this part one, part two, part three, etc. Before you come to this video, then you will have a full understanding on transmission line theory. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, thank you so much for strong support. Let's quickly revisit the lossless transmission line. Earlier on, I have derived these two equations. Okay, so basically, these two set of equations okay, in the function of voltage and also in the function of current basically used to describe a lossless transmission line. Next, I also derive this equation on reflection coefficient. Okay, so if you're not sure how I actually derive this equation, again, please take a look on the playlist. I will put this particular video on the derivation on the lossless transmission line and the derivation on this reflection coefficient under the description. So please take a look on this video in order to understand how I actually derive this set of equation. Next, Okay, because the objective is to discuss on return loss, I need to rearrange these two set of formula so that it will be easier for me to explain on the return loss. Okay, so next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange the voltage on the lossless transmission line and also the current equation on the lossless transmission line. Okay, so next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation firstly, okay, divided by V0 plus. Okay, so over here, V0 plus over V0 plus, they become 1. So therefore, I have only this E minus J beta Z. Okay, so basically, this will be the incident wave. Okay, next, on the other side, basically, you can see from here, VO minus over VO plus. Okay, so this will be my reflected wave. Okay, so over here, look over here. Okay, basically, this VO minus over VO plus is simply just a reflection coefficient. So, Next step I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this with a reflection coefficient. And then last but not least, I'm going to describe them typically on a voltage. So I shift this VO plus onto the right-hand side, which finally I arrive at this equation. So in this equation, you can see that this is basically the incident wave. This will be the reflected wave. I do exactly the same with my current equation. Okay, so basically, this is the current equation. I divide them by VO plus. Okay, so basically, VO plus over VO plus, this become 1. So I get this equation here. So VO minus over VO plus over here. Okay, this part here, I just move it to the left-hand side. And basically, this will be E minus, uh, sorry, E J beta Z here. Okay, again, this part here okay, can be replaced by the reflection coefficient. Okay, as you can see from here, and finally, I just rearrange the formula. I get this formula. And again, I just multiply this VO plus to the right-hand side. And then I finally get this equation. I'm going to use these two equations to explain on the return loss. Okay, next. Okay, the voltage and current on the line consists of a superposition of an incidence and also refracted wave. Okay, so basically you can see from here, okay, for example, as I mentioned earlier on, this is an incident wave, this is a refractor wave. Basically, the voltage and current at all the transmission line 
they basically consist of superposition of both the incidence and also refracted wave. Okay, such waves are called standing waves. Okay, we normally think of wave as moving okay, because we know that wave actually just like the sea, okay, the wave actually is always moving. Okay, but the name standing okay, imply that it's actually not moving at all. Standing wave is also known as stationary wave. Okay, it's a combination of two waves moving in opposite direction, which is the incidence and refracted wave. Okay, so over here, which I have derived earlier on, okay, so basically you can imagine this will be the incident wave, this will be the refracted wave. Same for the current, this will be the incident wave, this will be the refracted wave. Only when refraction coefficient is equal to zero, okay, when this is equal to zero, there is no refracted wave. Okay, so if this is zero here, can you imagine? Okay, then I won't be having any refracted wave, right? Because this is zero, I only have purely the incident wave because all the refracted wave is equal to zero as illustrated over here. Okay, in order to obtain this refraction coefficient equal to zero, okay, the load impedance, okay, ZL, must be equal to the characteristic impedance Z0. Okay, in order to get this equal to zero, as you can see from here, I need to get this equal to zero. So what I need to do is I need to ensure the low impedance and the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, they must be equal. Once they equal, equal number, when they actually minus off, they become zero. And therefore, my refraction coefficient becomes zero. This is what it means over here. Okay, such a load, when they are actually equal, is said to be matched to the line since there is no reflection of the incident wave. Next, okay, the definition of return loss is the ratio of the incident power to the refracted wave. Okay, so you can see from here, this will be the incident power over the refracted wave. And typically, okay, we actually use dB to describe the value over here. In another word, okay, if all the power from the source was transferred to the load, okay, which means that everything is well matched, all the power basically will be able to deliver from the source to the load, then there will, then there will be an infinite return loss, okay, which means that I have very big return loss, high return loss in short, or maybe infinite, okay, because when I actually claims that all the power from the source is able to transfer over to the load, then I will have infinite return loss. Okay, if there is an open or short circuit termination, okay, which means that PI is equal to PR, then all the power will be returned okay, or reflected back and there will be no return loss. Everything all returned, so there won't be any return loss. So this is what you want to say. Okay, so imagine from here, Okay, if it's well matched, okay, which means that all the power from the incidence, they will be able to deliver to the load, okay, which means that my PR will be very small, a big number divided by a very small number, then this will be infinite. So this is what it means over here. Okay, so when they actually are well matched, okay, basically all the source power will be able to transfer to the load. So therefore, my return loss will be infinite. Okay, because everything from the incident wave will be transferred to the load and therefore my refracted wave will be very, very, very small. Big number divided by small number, okay, which means that this will be a very big number and hence I can assume that it will be an infinite return loss. However, if there is an open or short circuit, which means that these two are actually the same because of open or short circuit, and when these two are equals, this is equals to one. And what happened here is basically when log one, I actually get zero. So then all the power will be written, okay, which means that all the power will be reflected back and there won't be any return loss because all the power has been written. So therefore, there won't be any return loss. Okay, when the load is mismatched, not all of the available power from the generator is delivered to the load. Okay, for example, we have some slight mismatch, for example, okay, not all the power will be able to deliver to the load, from the source to the load. Okay, so therefore, this loss is called the return loss. Okay, so this gives you the definition of return loss. Return loss basically 
quickly mention that, for example, when the load is mismatched or slight mismatch, okay, not all the power will be able to deliver from the source to the load. And this form of loss, we call this as return loss. And basically, it's governed by this equation. Okay, so this equation actually with respect to incident power and also refracted power. Okay, this equation, you can see that basically it's a function of refraction coefficient. Next, I'm going to quickly discuss about the return loss of transmission line. Okay, let's investigate the physical meaning of return loss. In an RF system, okay, when power is sent from the source to the load, there are three main parameters to be considered. When I actually want to send the power from the source to the load, I need to consider three things. One, the incident power. Two, the refracted power. And three, the power that will be absorbed by the load. So these are the three parameters that I will be concerned when I actually talk about return loss. Okay, incident power is independent of the transmission line and load. Okay, in short, my incident wave Okay, basically will not depend on the value or the characteristic impedance of the transmission line and also the load. Okay, it mainly depends on the configuration of the source and cannot be changed once transmit from the source. Incident wave, basically you generate your incident wave. Okay, for example, you generate a sine wave. Basically, they will be independent on the characteristic impedance of the transmission line and also the impedance of the load. Basically, this incident wave okay, will be not able to change once it actually transmits out. Okay, the power absorbed by the load is essentially depend on both the incidence and refracted wave. How much power will be absorbed by the load basically depends on two things. One will be the incident wave. Another one will be the refracted wave. Okay, remember the incident wave. Okay, if nothing refracted back, everything will be delivered to the load. If everything all refracted back, nothing will be delivered to the load. Everything will fall under the refracted power. Okay, let's do a very quick understanding what is actually a high return loss and also a low return loss. A high return loss, okay, a high return loss indicate less power is refracted from the load. Okay, which means that very little power is refracted from the load. Okay, which means that almost everything will be able to deliver to the load. This is usually a desirable outcome, which means that I actually somehow have a maximum power transfer. Most of the source power is actually delivered to the load. When we actually talk about low return loss, okay, a lower return loss indicate more power is refracted from the load. Okay, which means that quite a substantial amount from the incident wave actually is refracted back to the source again. Okay, this usually means there is an impedance mismatch at the load. Okay, which means that uh, because of the mismatch, okay, some of the power actually refracted back. Okay, the return loss and BSWR, okay, voltage standing wave ratio, they are closely related. Okay, so my next video, I will discuss about BSWR on transmission line, they are actually closely related. Okay, both are measure of the efficient of power transmission from the source to the load. Okay, so both these parameters actually describe how much power will be able to deliver from the source to the load. So from here, I will say that is it maximum power transfer or minimum power transfer? So basically, under the low, under the return loss, and also BSWR will be able to say this whether I have maximum power transfer or minimum power transfer. When the load is mismatched, okay, not all the available power from the generator is delivered to the load. Okay, this loss is called return loss. Okay, which means that okay, when there are some slight mismatch, for example, okay, all the power will not be able to deliver to the load. Some will be refracted back. And this kind of loss is what we call a return loss. In general, there are actually two divisions. Okay, first division, we call it a match. Okay, when with a match load, okay, which means that the refraction coefficient is equal to zero, okay, the re return loss okay, will be infinite dB, which I have illustrated earlier on. Okay, when a total refraction, okay, which means that everything all refracted back, there has a return loss of zero dB because everything all returned back, 
all the incident power is all reflected back. Next, okay, note that return loss is a non-negative, always positive. Okay, we don't have a negative power, you just imagine this. So everything will be positive for reflection from a passive network. Okay, so if the load is matched to the transmission line, okay, my reflection coefficient will be equal to zero and the magnitude of the voltage on the line will be equal to this. Okay, let me use this equation to illustrate. When it's matched, okay, which means that my reflection coefficient is equal to zero. Okay, when this is actually become zero, I actually take away this term, which means that I only have the incident wave. Okay, and then I, I want this to be the magnitude and this is basically the phase and therefore I actually has the magnitude of VO plus as illustrated here. Such a line is sometimes said to be flat okay, because it's a DC source. Some, somehow look like a DC source because uh, it's a flat voltage source, for example, here. Okay, when the load is mismatched, however, okay, the presence of reflected wave lead to standing wave and the magnitude of the voltage on the line is not constant. Okay, remember when we talk about the VSWR or the reflected wave means that I actually have some form of reflected wave. Once I have a reflected wave, okay, it won't be a constant number. Over here, you can see that when the reflection coefficient is equal to zero, it's somehow like a DC value. However, when the load is unmatched, okay, most of the case, Okay, we can't have 100% match case. Okay, even how well designed, we have some mismatch. And once we have some mismatch, we bound to have some form of reflector wave. Okay, so therefore, this actually led to the line to be inconstant, okay, which means that the value has some changes, especially true when they actually mismatch. Okay, a high return loss is a favorable measurement parameters and it typically correlates to a low insertion loss. Okay, in this diagram here, you can see that this is what we call in blue, the return loss. Okay, in red will be the insertion loss. So when they are actually lower, my insertion loss is actually ideal. Okay, so on the next video, I will explain on the VSWR on the transmission line. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now.